Let's look now at design patterns used in test automation frameworks and more specific, let's look at page object model. Page object model is one of the most popular design patterns used in test automation. In the page object model, each page in the application is represented by a class that contains locators and methods for interacting with the elements on the page. This pattern is used to reduce duplication of code and improve maintenance. For example, if we have a common widget which is shared across multiple pages, we can implement this widget in a page object and share it with the other pages where the widget is present. Here we have the implicit weight tests. So what we'll do, we'll rewrite this test using page object models. Let's see how can we do this. We will be using the same solution, Selenium WebDriver project, but let's rename the existing project maybe to Selenium WebDriver Basics. And now what we will do, we will add a couple of new projects in this solution, one for page objects and one for the tests. So let's have a look here. What we do, we navigate to Selenium Web Form HTML page. As we can see, the title is Web Form. So what we want to do is to create a page object for this page. Let's do that. First, let's create a new project in Selenium Web Driver solution where we will store the page objects. We will select the class library. For dependencies configurations, we have to add Selenium WebDriver to this project also. First, let's define the driver and create the constructor. So we need to share the driver and this is how we do it using the constructor. Let's now also define two sections. So we'll have one for locators and another section which will be for the page object methods. Switching back to our test, the locator we need is defined here. So is this text area we have here. Let's double check it. As you can see, it has this name, which is my text area. We already have this here, but let's write it also in our page object class. This would be a web element. And the action we do is we send this text to our text area. And in this case, we just send some text to our text area. So we remain on the same page object, which is web form page. And at the end, return this. And this is our method which writes text to the text area web element. Let's switch back to our test class. So what we did, we implemented this line and the following line. And now we are ready to create our next project where we will store the test cases. As we can see in this test class, we have some lines of code which are duplicated. Like here, we create a web driver, we maximize the window and we navigate to the page URL. The same lines of code we find in the next test method and also in the last one. And what we'll do here, we'll create a test based class which will share this common logic. But first, let's install the dependencies. 
and that's it we have dotnet test sdk and unit and unit retest adapter selenium web driver and selenium support now let's go and create the test best class First, let's define the web driver. Now we can start with the setup method. And what we want to add in the setup method is what happens before running a test method. In our case, would be these lines of code. We create a Chrome driver, we maximize the browser and this line of code where we navigate to web form HTML page. So let's do that. What else we do here? We also set this implicit weight. So let's add this. And now let's look at teardown method. And what we want to do here is to add this line of code. So there it is, this is our teardown method, here we have our setup method. Those two methods will run before and after each test, because we use these annotations which are coming from an unit setup and teardown. So we will be using this web form page, and of course we can create an instance of this object in our test cases, or if we know this is common for all of our test cases, we can create this object in our test base class. So let's do that. And here is where we share the driver instance with the page objects. Actually, let's rename this folder to common. And also change the namespace. And now we are ready to create our test class and extend the test base. So let's see what we need here. We need this string and we need to call the web form page object and call the write to text area method. So let's do that. And here we can call the web form which is coming from the test base. And now we have to call the write text method. Maybe what we can do extra after setting the text, we can also click on the submit button. And here we have this target page, which has this message received. So let's do this validation. First we need the submit. Okay, this is unique on this page, one of one, so we can use the button tag name. Because the submit button is on web form page, we are going to implement this on the same page object model. Now let's think, because we changed the page, we need another page object, which in this case, let's see, is this target page.
Now let's switch back to our web form page and the object we will return in this case is the target page. And just like that, here we change the page, so we return a new instance of the new page we navigate to. And in this method, we do not change the page, so we return an instance of the same page object. Now, what we have to do in the target page is, for example, we can check this received message is displayed. As you can see, this has the ID message, so let's use this. And there it is, our web element message. And here we have a method which returns the text for our message. So let's switch to our web form test and submit this form. So just like this, we start from the web form we write the text to our text area, we submit the form and we get the text message. Now we can talk about validations. In essence, assertions are used to check the behavior of a test. The question is how many asserts we have in a test. And we may find cases like one validation per test. We know that testing only one thing will isolate this and prove whatever or not it works or multiple validations per test. For example, for system testing or integration testing, it's possible that we may need to have multiple validation for the same test scenario. So choosing between a single validation or multiple validation for a test is something which is dependent on the context, for example, about the test types. And the following question may be where we add the validations, in the page objects or in the tests? This is again something which depends on the case. As a guideline, assertions should be done in the tests. But on the other hand, if you are using fluent interface to write your tests, where you have to repeat the same validation between multiple tests, the so-called general assertions like verify a page is loaded, maybe page objects could also be a solution to store the validations. So depending on the design and the testing framework, a balanced approach may be that we are using asserts in page objects to check the basic functionalities of web elements, while the asserts in the tests verify the expected outcome of the test. So let's give it a run. As expected, the test has passed, and we can see this also in Test Explorer. So let's recap. We have here the page objects project. In a page object, we find locators. And here we find the driver instance, which is shared across the page objects. And of course, we find also the page object methods. Here we have our second page object, which is similar. In common, we find the test base, where we define the driver, the landing page, and the two methods. The first one is the setup method, where we do the actions needed before running the test, like creating a Chrome driver instance, we maximize the window, we navigate to the landing page, we set the implicit weight, and eventually we also create an object for our landing page, which will be used by the test. And in the teardown, we just call the driver quit method. And in the web form tests, we have a test sample where we use the page objects. So we start from the web form, we write text to the text area, submit the form and get the message. And at the end, we have this validation, which takes care of our test is working as expected. What else? We have the dependencies. 
For example, in page objects, we have the Selenium web driver and in the test projects, we have the Selenium dependencies and unit and also Microsoft.NET test SDK. We can also have a debug and see how this works. First, let's set a breakpoint in the test base class in the setup method. Create in the Chrome driver instance. Let's have this split it so we can see what happens on the right side. Navigate to page URL. Enter to our page object. Send text to our text area. Then we have to click on the Summit button. This is our message. And the last step, we do our validation. And as we can see, now we are in the teardown method where we call the driver quit. And that's it about page object model. Thank you very much for your time and see you in the next one. Bye.